You're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. And welcome to Shreveport. And the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl is part of Capital One Bowl Mania. It may look like it's a nice, comfortable, warm, kind of fuzzy feeling day in Shreveport, but let me tell you something, it is far from that. Santa's happy, though. Houston and Louisiana, they're happy. They get to play one more game. Two teams that thought they were going to be in a chase for their respective conference championships, but things didn't work out. And here they are in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. The winner gets to take home a trophy today between the Cougars and the Raging Cajuns. And a pleasant good afternoon wherever you may be, everybody, and happy holidays. I'm Dave Neal. This is former Ole Miss great Deuce McAllister. Harry Lyles down on the sidelines. We'll check in him with him in just a moment. But, Deuce, let's talk about this for a moment because the weather here is just tough. I mean, mid-20s, wind chill in the teens. From a player's perspective, how difficult is it to get your mind right for something like this? Yeah, that's basically what you have. It has to be the right mentality that you're going to be dealing with, and it's really mental from that standpoint. I mean, obviously they know what they're doing as far as offense, defense going out and playing the game. It's the mental aspect that they have to be able to fight through. When you're out on the field, it's easy. It's when you're on the sideline, when you're not moving, that's when it's hard. <laughs> well, certainly Houston comes into this one with a high-octane offense. Really, second half of the season, they got things clipping at a really good rate. Clayton Toon's been doing this a long time. Tank Dell is wide receiver, a couple of record-setting dudes playing in their final game. Doesn't get much better than these two guys. Definitely doesn't get much better. And I think, you know, when you look at it, what they have done with this offense has been impressive. And you talk about Clayton, his ability to not only throw the football and distribute it to different playmakers, but running it as well. And so, you know, I expect them to go out with a bang and you know I talk about Tank Dale what he can do from the slot just being a special special receiver I think both of those guys have a chance to play at the next level well as far as Louisiana goes uh, they're going to have to find a way to slow these guys down I mean basically it begins and ends with these two guys you look at the numbers for Clayton Toon over 100 touchdown passes 37 of those this year 15 of them went to the guy on the right and Tank Dell, who has had back-to-back 1,200-yard -back seasons. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, the quarterback situation has been a topic of conversation in Louisiana, certainly this year. Uh, this guy, Chandler Fields, had the job, then got hurt, lost it, and Ben Woolridge got hurt, and now he's back as the starter, is Fields. What does he bring to the team, and what do they need from him today? Well, I think for him, his ability to kind of play off a of schedule is definitely something that you have to be aware of. And then just getting him to slow down a little bit. When you talk about offensively staying within the structure of it, but he's a guy that can go out there and obviously distribute the football, but run it as well. And so I think, you know, overall, just getting the game to slow down a little bit for Chandler and just getting that offense going. Well, obviously, it's going to be a tough day for both these teams with these conditions. And uh, for more on that, let's go down to the sidelines and visit and check in with Harry Lyles. Yeah, guys, it's certainly not warm down here. The thermometer down here is reading at about 32, but it feels a lot colder because of this wind. Both teams are dealing with your typical things that you would have on the sideline for a cold weather game like this. You've got the heated benches, you've got the heaters behind the benches, and they've got hand warmers as well. I will tell you the biggest factors, I, I believe, in this game are going to be the sun. In this east corner of this end zone, if you're a receiver, turn around looking for a ball. You could certainly lose it in that sun. And then the wind, it's constantly blowing at about 13 miles per hour right now, and it's supposed to get up to about 23 during certain points of the game, so that's something to keep an eye on. All right, we'll see how this turf holds up as well. Harry, it's brand new turf. Put this thing in a couple weeks ago. Nobody's really even played on it, but maybe a little extra cushion today. I know watching some of the games yesterday uh, in these conditions, it was hard watching guys getting tackled and taken down to the, what was uh, grass, but felt, probably felt like concrete. But anyway, we are just about set to play here. Houston won the toss. They defer, so Louisiana will get the football first today. So Chandler Fields will take the field, and we'll figure out which one of these teams is mentally and physically prepared to play in these conditions. Here is Dana Holgerson. Put together a pretty good little recruiting class, brought in some transfers last week. Tough for these guys. Bowl season with this early signing day to keep their attention focused on the team and the future team as well. So Kyle Ramsey will put his foot into it and this will be blasted into the end zone and out to the 25 yard line and here comes this raging Cajun offense led by Chandler Fields. They average 27 points a game, seventh in the Sun Belt. You see the Particulars on Mr. Fields. Not a big kid at 5'10", 201, but as you talked about, Deuce, can do a little bit of everything. You can't really just kind of pigeonhole him into he's one type of quarterback. Well, and he has a good understanding of that offense. I think that definitely helps him as well. And so knowing where he wants to go with the football helps him. And then being able to play off a schedule when something kind of breaks down, he knows what to do with the football as well there. 
This is a team that rushes for about 142 yards a game. They throw it for about 224. Going up against this Houston defense that, boy, it's been kind of a struggle. And it's it's been a lot of players in and out of this lineup, haven't had the same 11 on the field very often. But they've had a chance to get healthy here the last few weeks. First pass goes to the outside. And that one is caught there by Neil Johnson, one of those tight ends. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Interesting how well Louisiana has kind of run the football. It's kind of what they do in this offense. Start this one off with a pass. And I, I would assume the team that runs the ball the best in a day like this with the cold and the wind would probably have the definite advantage. And we'll keep it on the ground. The left side of that offensive line, they'll go with Chris Smith at over 580 yards rushing. Bell brings him down. Babe, I agree with you when you talk about running the football. You know, whoever can run it consistently probably will have the edge in this game. But, you know, it would be interesting what other receiver outside of Neil Johnson can step up. You know, he's the tight end. He's leading this team right now in yardage just because you don't have Jefferson available. But I think when you look at it overall, somebody else has to step up. So first third down of the game for the Raging Cajuns. Fields will keep it himself. He'll have the first down. Down near the 39-yard line, they'll spot him back at the 38. Mutant runs him out of bounds, but a gain of 11, and the offense will stay on the field. Really nice design quarterback run, and you saw that they were caught him in man-to-man, -man, and so when you have motion to back out of the backfield, it's quarterback draw all the way. Really nice design on that play. Hand off right side. They're going to run Smith again, turns the corner. He picks up 10, maybe 11, and a big collision over there on that far sideline. And there is Coach Mike Desimo, who has a long time, long history with the Raging Cajun program as a player assistant coach. Took over for Billy Napier this year, his first season, but he understands what it's like to be a Louisiana Raging Cajun. Boy, had a great conversation with him yesterday for a long time. Enjoyed being around him and this staff. Fields breaks a tackle, and he'll be dropped at the Houston 49-yard line, a gain of three. So it's two times, and you see it, you know, probably going through, probably got to about his second option there and before he decides to tuck it and pick up a couple of yards. That's where you want Chandler to be able to say, okay, I know where the third guy is. I'm looking to the right. I know where my check down is. And, you know, it's because that sometimes you, that, that – pocket will collapse a lot faster and you won't be able to escape it up the middle. Neil Johnson goes in motion, sets up on that right side of the line. They'll spin to the wide side of the field. Fields throws on the run, pass is caught. Near the 36-yard line by Errol Rogers, who just picked up his 19th catch of the year and picks up 13 more yards. Really nice design here. The want to hit the back in the flat, but he goes to the second level, and you can't throw a football any better there than Chandler Fields does. And Earl Rogers just running that deep out, able to come up with the catch for the first down. Moving the chains again, first down and 10 from the Cougar 38. Fields throws, and another reception. Second one for Neil Johnson today. He came in with 22 grabs. He also had 22 catches a year ago, picks up seven more. Some really nice rhythm offensively for Louisiana. I mean, they've worked in a short game. We've had a couple of bootlegs. You wanted to get to that second level. You've seen the quarterback run a little bit, so they're mixing it up really nice on this opening drive. Terrence Williams checks in at running back. They'll line up in that pistol formation on second down and short. Left side, no room to run. Got back to the line of scrimmage, did Williams. But back to Fields for a moment. You talked about he brings a little bit of everything to the table. Maybe nothing great, but a lot of good things. And we've seen that here in this opening drive of kind of what he possesses. Well, I think that they've helped him with the quick game, and that was being able to get the football out of his hands and, you know, being able to progress from first level as far as in the flat and then going to the intermediate throw. They've done a nice job of getting him involved with his legs, but also obviously distribution of the football is one of the things that he's going to do really well. it off again working that left side of the line on third down and 
three. I don't think that he got much, if any. So now you're kind of in that fourth down range in no man's land on a cold, windy day. You're kicking what looks to be into the wind. And they're going to keep the offense on the field on fourth down and three. Both of those plays, not a lot of movement up front from that offensive line. And Houston does a nice job of just being able to uh, stuff things inside. You know, when you look at this offense, they like to be able to get outside stretch zone, outside zone type runs. But DeAnthony Jones not giving any ground on those two plays. Tenth play of this drive coming up. It's a big one on fourth down. They'll bootleg it to the wide side. Fields will throw back over the middle. Pass is caught down around the 20-yard line. And that one goes to Johnny Lumpkin. The other tied in who just picked up his 14, uh, 15th catch and 11 yards in the process. Dave, this is a really nice job by Chandler Fields. He wants to go in the flat, and there are three guys covering in the flat. This is the over route for Lumpkin that Fields is able to get to, and they're able to pick up that first down uh, on fourth down. On first down, and they're going to say catch is made around the 12. That one's going to go to Lance Lejean, the former quarterback who they have moved out to wide receiver and did he hold on to this football did a nice job of catching it with his hands and then it's really when he tried to protect it against his body and i think they want to probably take another look at this this catch and see if he controlled it so while they'll take a look at that we'll take one more shot at it before we head off to break you be the judge and see if it matches up with the folks that matter on the other side. While we were away, they have determined that Lance Lejean did, in fact, make a catch. The play will stand, so there was not a indisputable video evidence to overturn it. So the former quarterback who has moved to wide receiver really during week two of this season makes a catch. and. Places the ball around the 12-yard line. What a start for Fields on this drive. Five for five, 41 yards. He's also rushed it a couple of times for another dozen yards. And they sit here second down and two, and they are knocking on the door inside the red zone. Opening drive of this game. Play 11. They kick it to the outside. Rodgers makes the catch, and he turns the corner around the five-yard line for a first down and a gain of seven. Jalen Emery pushes him out of bounds, but first and goal now for the Raging Cajuns. Dave, and one of the things that this offense, from an offensive standpoint, they try to simplify it for those quarterbacks. And what I mean by that, you see the motion. If they're going to play off coverage, then we're just going to throw a screen and let our guy be able to win one-on-one. -on -one. And they like Rodgers in those matchups. And so they want to make the, the look as easy and as simple as possible for those quarterbacks. And Chandler Fields has done a nice job so far. Neil Johnson goes in motion, sets up on the left side of that line. The handoff, it's a couple of yards down to around the four-yard line. There's Chris Smith on that carry. He's got three rushing touchdowns on the year. The team's a leading rusher. This Houston defense has been a little bit maligned this year with injuries and such, giving up 33 points a game. That is ninth in the American. This is a Houston team that is heading off to the Big 12 next year. Here's Fields. He's going to throw for it. Really had nowhere to go. Well covered by Houston. Stevens in the end zone. Looked like he was the intended target, but the Cougars all over that one. It's third and goal. Yeah, and you can hear defensively they're hollering boot, boot the whole way. That was probably the best that they have covered that boot. They've done a nice job of being able to cover the flat. It's been that secondary throw that uh, Chandler Fields has been able to um, have some success on. And so you look at the job that they know that they have to do. They've done a nice job of slowing down that zone game inside and then just trying to slow down some of the tight end throws is what they have to be able to do. That's Doug Belt, the defensive coordinator in that warm booth, trying to dial something up here on third and goal. Fields looking to throw. Pocket collapses. Dodges one defender, two defenders coming near side, throws to the back of the end zone. It's caught. Touch 
touchdown, Louisiana. What a grab from Johnny Lumpkin if it holds. We're going to take another look at it, but this, I think Lumpkin does get one foot down, and you can see it right there at the end zone. He does get one foot down, a nice job. This is what we were talking about earlier, Dave, with Chandler Fields just being able to avoid pressure. And originally, it came off the right side by uh, Nelson Caesar, who's had that pressure, and then Chandler's able to spin out of it, keep his eyes down the field to find Lumpkin for the touchdown throw. Really nice opening drive for that Louisiana offense. Amandaris to attempt to pull it after. And it is up and good. Fourth opening drive touchdown of the season for the Raging Cajuns. 15 plays. Heck of a catch by the 6'6", 270-pounder Johnny Lumpkin. Technology's Independence Bowl is brought to you by Radiance Technologies. 100% employee owned since 1999. Ticket smarter. A smarter way to buy tickets. And Capital One. What's in your wallet? To say that these uh, players lack some good food would be a lie. Whole smoked hogs, bacon wrapped alligator, gulf shrimp, king cake. Man, they had it all this week. Matter of fact, these two teams got after it pretty much since the time they got here. They had a little, uh, let's just say, a discussion at one of the events. A little competition got a little too heated. <laughs> yeah, and then what, what, what was interesting, the coaches were not there. The coaches right. were apparently at another <laughs> event, and so uh, they got together, I guess, early during the week, and they could not get together again as far as the two teams. And so everything that they did for the bowl, for this bowl, they had to do it separate. And so, uh, you know, maybe a little adult discussion going on between, amongst the players. Nothing wrong with some competition. Thomas Leo will kick it away after Louisiana. Marches it 75 yards and 15 plays for that touchdown. And it was really, I mean, you're talking about a big tight end, but it starts here with the quarterback fields. Yeah, it definitely does a nice job of avoiding the pressure. And then that's one of the things we talked about earlier was him being able to create. What's interesting is they had designed bootlegs to the right. This time he really goes left, and, man, that's an athletic play by Lumpkin to be able to not only high point the football and go up and catch it high, but to be able to get a foot down to make it a score as well. Well, here's a guy that's had an unbelievable career. Came in uh, to this, actually after the regular season, tied for the – Lead in the country with 37 touchdown passes. Clayton Toon wrapping up his career, the senior out of Carrollton, Texas, making his 47th, uh, 44th start, his 47th game played as a Houston Cougar, and completed 67% of his passes this year for almost 4,000 yards. Not to mention, here's a guy that's also rushed for 490. Yeah, and he's, you're talking about a quarterback that leads a team in running the football, and so you know he can he, he hurt you through the air or on the ground. They'll run it off the left side. Dejon Henry with that carry will pick up four. And those of you that hadn't followed Houston football this year, they got off to a little slow start. They were two and three out of the gate, and. Offensively, they were trying to play more complementary offense to help a defense that was missing a lot of players because of injuries. And then really in the Memphis game, when they rallied from a huge deficit to win 33-32, that's when Dana Holgerson basically in that game says, you know what, if we're going to win, we got to open this thing up and get back more to what an air raid offense looks like. And their offense has been rolling since that decision. Yeah, I think that's what the, one of the best things, you know, and hey, if we have to go fast and we're going to put points on the board, then that's exactly what we're going to do. On third down and a couple, they will run it here. It's going to be close. It might be about a half a yard shy. They went with Henry again. Chris Moncrief came up to make the tackle, maybe about a yard on that carry. So it's going to be fourth and a half a yard. Houston's keeping the offense on the field from their own 35. High snap. They'll run it here. And they're going to have the first down. Boy, what a job by Henry. It looked like he was going to get tripped up three yards back. And flags come out. Maybe you can add some more. It's a little late hit. We'll move this another 15. 
I love the decision to go for it. And, you know, you, you talk about the personnel grouping. It's three tight ends. And so those first four plays were all run, and I think that was after the play. We'll get the official ruling here so from the, the play official. So the was a first down. Per, after the play, personal foul, number four, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Scott Harden, our referee out of Conference USA. And what's interesting, when you go back and look at it, you know, you had a chance for a tackle for loss and, you know, turnover for downs, but they could not make the uh, the play in the backfield. And, and so I love the, the decision to go for it on fourth down. They had picked up the yardage needed for that first down, but Louisiana just couldn't make the play to be able to stop them, and now they're giving them an additional 15. Yeah, the ball sets up inside Louisiana territory at the 49. Tune, he's going to keep it himself. Runs off the right side, falls to the 40. Four yard line. So a gain of six on the quarterback keeper. Nice job, you know, both quarterbacks able to run the football, and we see Toon there with the design quarterback draw. Both both teams using their quarterback as far as runners. Well, I tell you what, we thought that Louisiana would spend most of their opening drive running the football. They threw it more on that opening drive, and now we're seeing Houston run more than we anticipated as well. Let's go downstairs to Perry Lyles. Yeah, guys, you know, I spoke with Louisiana defensive lineman Zion Hill Green on the three things they needed to do to stop Houston's offense. He said they want to execute their play calls. He said the biggest thing in football is to never beat yourself. They want to pursue the ball so they could stop them from having big plays. And he said they want to have fun. He said being excited out there and flying around and, and having fun with your guys is the biggest thing in football. Something that defensive coordinator Lamar Morgan has stressed. He says when they have fun out there, that's when they're playing their best. But Houston right now, backpedaling. Down goes Clayton Toon. He is dropped by Gant. A loss of nine. Just taking another look at it, and so once Gant sees that the back is kind of staying in, he triggers, and that is his cue as far as to go. And so this is really a green dog by Gant, and so the back is kind of pausing, pausing, hesitating around a little bit, and there is nowhere for Toon to go with the football, and that's how Gant is able to come up with that sack there against Toon, and you know, that was probably the first time that they've brought really pressure on that drive and they were able to get to the quarterback. Garer back to return this punt from Lane Wilkins. He'll field it at the 10. And dropped after a gain of about three yards. But Louisiana back on the field. Their second possession, the first one resulted in a touchdown. They lead it by seven. Back to Shreveport in a moment. Hey, coming up next, a game that could come down to which quarterback plays better. Sam Hartman and Wake Forest square off against Brady Cook and the Missouri Tigers in the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern time. Of course, Sam Hartman wrapping up his career. How about his numbers? 107 career passing touchdowns, tied with Taj Boyd for the most in ACC history. Meanwhile, Brady Cook is Hasn't flashed like Sam Hartman, but all he's done is win some ball games in his first year's regular starter. That handoff for the Raging Cajuns goes to Chris Smith. Not much happening there. Brought down by DeAnthony Jones. Hey, one thing about this defensive line, though, they will get penetration. That front seven, they will get penetration. You know, you're talking about one of the tops in the country as far as tackle for losses. You know, it's the explosive plays that they've been able to giving up from a defensive standpoint. But being able to get penetration, they're definitely capable of doing that, and we've seen it a few times here early in this ballgame. A four-man look from the Cougars. Fields will throw over the middle. Throws a bullet across the middle, and it's caught around the 30-yard line by Stevens. First down. Just taking a look at that last drive, you see the bootleg here and being able to get back to the number three uh, target. Here's a little screen that he just get to Rodgers. And you know, Fields has done a nice job of having command of this offense and just from a distribution standpoint, being able to get the football to different guys. Chris Smith will break a tackle, picks up a couple of yards near the 34-yard line. Well, I've been impressed with Fields to start this game. We've seen some of that arm strength the coaches talked about. 
not only from an arm strength standpoint, but just a movement standpoint. I mean, a lot of the design runs, you've had two of those, and then from a bootleg standpoint, at least four of those, just getting him out of the pocket, making the, the field, whether you're talking about just half of a side of a field, giving him some level throws, he's been really good early. Second down and eight. Faked a handoff, faked a little tap pass, and decided to throw it, and it was just dropped. Out there by Earl Rogers. I think he thought that might have been coming a little hotter than it was. Love it. Let's go back down to Harry. Hey guys, they had to uh, turn off the bigger heaters down here on the sidelines because they were burning up this new field turf down here. You could see that there's little big, almost like divots where you see all the rubber pellets on the field, but none of the actual field. So that's going to be a factor here in keeping this sideline warm, which I can tell you it is not. Okay, that's a first. I've been doing this a long time. I've never heard of the heaters burning the turf. I don't think they put that into the uh, spec when they had it, you know, when they made this field and design. Here's Fields running out of trouble and throws, and oh, that should have been picked off. Boy, the Cougars had a chance for the interception, but it falls to the turf. Fields pass incomplete, nearly intercepted. Just taking another look at it, and this is probably doing a little bit too much. He was trying to hit the over route, and oh, you know, there, I'm just getting rid of the football. I'm not going to chance it and let them uh, get great field position by tossing it up, just trying to make a play. Right there, they, they won. They got you, and so just throw it away. And that's one of the things from a development standpoint where uh, you just can't trust your arm that much as far as just being a gunslinger quarterback. Boy, Adu's going to want that one back. That was right in his hands. So Burns punts this one away. Not a good kick. Just does trickle across the midfield stripe into Houston territory, but a short field coming up for the Houston offense. Hey, we'll be back in 10 seconds after this message from Verbo. All right, I've heard some of you guys say VRBO, and let's just be honest, that's not it, okay? It's Verbo, Tebow, Verbo like Tebow, Tebow like Verbo. Well, it is a cold day here in Shreveport, much like the rest of America, although after some of the pictures and video I have seen this morning, um, I feel fortunate that we're at a place that's about 30 degrees, wind chill somewhere around the teens. And there is a look at the new, the burned turf. Somebody's going to have to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. I've already spent my per diem. Cougars first pass of the game down the seam, and it is dropped around the 10-yard line. They were trying to hit Tank Dell, but the ball a little underthrown. Amos back there in coverage. It's interesting when you take a look at it, you know, and you see both of those guys kind of hand fighting there a little bit, and, and Dale has to hold up, pause, and Amos is covering him, but I almost thought Dale was able to, almost going to bring that football down. Thought he was going to go to the post route, that being yeah. tuned uh, early on, but he didn't like, didn't take that throw, and he went, you know, just a vertical route to, to Dale instead. Second down and ten. Well, run it. And a nice run there by Brandon Campbell to turn the corner and pick up five. Skipper with the tackle. That's one area I think Houston would like to feel a little bit better about in 2023, and that is having a guy at running back. Yeah, just having a guy at running back, and then you look at that offensive line, you know, so far all of those guys will be back, and I think, you know, early in this game, they've done a solid job as far as creating some lanes for those running backs. Boy, Toons had time to throw, but now he has flushed, spins near side. Eyes downfield, comes to the 40-yard line, and they're going to say the pass is caught there by Tank Dell. But Desclo back there in coverage. And does he hold on to this football? You can just see both quarterbacks being able to get out of the pocket and create a little bit. And yeah, that's a catch. That is definitely a catch. And on third down, and being able to get Dale the football is one thing that you know that they want to do. And, you know, the, the back end just cannot hold up long enough with, for him to be able to cover him that long. 104 catches now for Tank Dell. Run it on first down, and there goes Campbell. 
pushing and shoving going on. These two teams are pretty, you know, relatively close as far as bowl games go. Houston about three hours away. Lafayette about three hours away. And that'll be the final play of the first 15 minutes. Louisiana opened up this game with a 15-play drive that went 75 yards. And they lead Dana Holder since Houston Cougars by a touchdown after one quarter of play. We'll head back to the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl right after these messages. And welcome back to the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Downtown Shreveport, Red River running right through downtown. We're about, I don't know, two, two and a half miles from downtown Shreveport. It's been a nice couple of days here. Raging Cajuns enjoyed the first quarter. They struck first on their opening drive. They lead Houston seven to nothing. And really, I think one of the biggest surprises is this Houston offense has rushed it nine times, only thrown it twice to this point as they look at a second down and six. A little razzle-dazzle. Toon stays on his feet and finally dropped back at the 45-yard line. Toon is hurting, too. He got bent back. You see that offensive line waving for some help, but Toon gets up. The senior playing in his final game for the Cougars loses eight on the trickery. Boy, got a sock ripped in the process. Yeah, we'll take another look at it. And you talk about just being able to, it's going to be a reverse pass, but they lost on the edge. And once that happened, everything just breaks down. And he was never able to get his eyes back down the field. And it was that right knee, right leg that got caught up underneath it. He stays in there. But yeah, I mean, as you start the quarter, you try to go with a trick play, but they lost on the edge. and. Zion Hill Green had that pressure. So now they're chasing the sticks at third and 14. Pressure comes. Toon steps up, fires, passes, caught. They had the first down. I think they lost it. Matthew Golden, the freshman, backpedaled a couple of yards, and they're going to spot it at the 32. They need to get it to the 31. You know, from an offensive standpoint, you know, you go and look, it's a soft zone, it's a drop zone coverage, and he just finds that soft spot. If he gets north and turns, and he's going to pick up this first down, and so he decides to kind of go side to side, and that's where he was never able to get the first down completely. But they're going to go for it here again on fourth down. Yep, fourth and a half a yard. Campbell in the game. They will run it with him, and he ran right into a wall of white jerseys. He loses three yards, and Louisiana gets the stop at the football. Jasper Williams plugging the hole, making the play. Wow, you talk about disappointment from an offense. That's an offense that's moving down the field on third down, probably had the first down. Fourth down, they do not convert. And so you see that you try to run a little counter, too much penetration. UL will get control of the ball as we start, as we go into the next drive. Let's take a look at some of the top games to watch with our Capital One Bowl Mania update. And a couple of games played yesterday. Western Kentucky beat South Alabama 44-23. Austin Reed with another huge game for the Hilltoppers. Air Force just grounded out again. Perfect scenario for Air Force on a cold day in the Dallas area. And certainly coming up after this one, we have got a good one with Missouri and Wake Forest. But speaking of Austin Reed, he took over the national lead touchdown passes. He was tied with Clayton Toon, who's playing here today with Houston. And Sam Hartman sitting there with 35 touchdowns. He'll be on display when we are finished here in Shreveport. So first down and 10 for the Raging Cajuns. They lead it by a touchdown. On first down and 10, they'll hand it off to Washington. And he'll get a couple of yards before he is brought down. I have to be impressed with that defensive front, Dave. I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but you know, you look at uh, one of the JUCO guys that is eligible now, defensive end, Zy Strong, had a, some nice penetration there, but also inside, they had nice penetration from the defensive tackle as well. Zykea yeah. so Strong wearing number 90 on that left end for the Cougars. Pass is caught there by 
Cambry, he is across midfield. That'll be a first down for the Raging Cajuns, and they're putting a little tempo together here on this drive. Run it off the right side, a big hole there. Broken tackle and a first down from Draylen Washington. Bouncing off some red jerseys to keep his feet alive and a first down for Louisiana. A nice job here on the edge and then you talk about being able to break tackles. That's what Washington is able to do there. And, you know, you have to be able to bring your legs as well as your arms when you talk about tackling a bigger, stronger back and that's exactly what they did not need or to happen from Houston defense. And you know, if you're the Raging Cajuns, you want more of that. Coach Desermo over there, bundled up, likes what he sees from this offense. Boy, it looked like they were going to try a little trickery there, but that one is snuffed out. It almost looked like Chris Smith was trying to lateral that football. Jamal Morris, though, broke everything up, a loss of six. Yeah, they, they, that, that's exactly what they were. They were going to run exactly what Houston ran, but it was a penetration right there up the middle, and so they never got the chance to be able to hand it to Cambry and then get it back to Chandler Fields. And more as he blew it up, once he saw the edge, just the soft softness right there on the right side of that offensive line, with him making that tackle for loss, he probably saved Louisiana from losing more yardage. Second down, swing it out to the wide side of the field to Chris Smith. He'll pick up four, but he'll be well shy. He's like shy of the original line of scrimmage. Sean Buten there with a tackle for the Cougars. So third down and 12 now. Count probably if you can't get all of it here, Dave, you probably want to at least pick up three or four yards, maybe five yards to put yourself to be able to go for it right there on fourth down. But John goes in motion, splits out wide on the far side, two receivers near side. Pass is caught there around the 25 yard line by the aforementioned Lance LeJean. His second catch today, Art Green back there in coverage. So Louisiana's going to leave that offense, well, going to leave that offense out. It looks like they're going to probably attempt to kick a field goal here now, but I thought that they would probably go for it. Kenneth Almendaris, who is 15 out of 20 this season, long of 52. This one will be from 43 yards out off the far hash. Out of the hold of Dalen Cambry. Execution looks good. Let's see if the kick is good, and it is. A flag is down, however. There is a flag on the field. And it's fourth and four, so this is against Houston. That'd be problems for the Cougars, but we'll wait and see. Did they line up in the neutral zone? Or was it something afterwards? because you normally would never want to take points off the board. Result of the play is the field goal was good. After the play, personal foul, number 13, defense. That 15-yard penalty will be a force on the kickoff. Timeout on the field. So officially marked as a 42-yard field goal for Kenneth Almendaris. Ooh, a little right hook. Caught by our officiating crew, but 10 nothing raging Cajuns. The Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl is brought to you by Radiance Technologies, 100% employee owned since 1999, and Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Well, you see it every bowl game, uh, some of the festivities. It's great when these teams get with programs like Holy Angels, which is an independent nonprofit organization dedicated to providing love, support, and empowerment for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Spend a time with those maybe not as fortunate and bringing smiles to those kids' faces. It's always a great part of Bowl Week, and it happened right here in Shreveport as well. Kudos to those guys for making some folks smile. Cougars aren't smiling right now. They're down 10 to nothing. 
Second quarter football, Dave Neal alongside former Ole Miss great and NFLer Deuce McAllister. Harry Lyles down on the sidelines, or we think he's down there. Haven't heard from Harry in a while. So it is a little cold. <laughs> he's putting out fires. Yeah, he's floating around. I see him over there. He's floating around. Wherever the heat is, you will find Harry, I'm sure. He was a little disappointed. We thought there was going to be some uh, chicken soup down there, some chicken broth. Hey, I, I need it, guys. I, it's cold. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a fake tough guy. It's, it's cold, fellas. I love it. I'm not a fake tough guy. I love it. I love your honesty. Here. Yeah, hey, it's cold. <laughs> you and me, I'm not afraid to tell you it's cold either. My feet, my feet are a little numb. I've got some atomic fireballs ready to go. Well, it was interesting, you know, before the game, you got these guys running around with no shirts on and, you know, they're in the shorts and it's like, uh, no fellas. Good to be young, that's all I can say. Little squib kick taken there by Rodgers, and he'll be dropped inside the 20 around the 16-yard line, and that is where Houston will have the football. And again, pushing and shoving going on. Just stay out of the trouble down there, Harry. Hey, got to, right? Hey, listen, I spoke with Clayton Toon before the game, and he told me that the fourth quarter of the Memphis game, their sixth one of the years when Houston's offense really started changing gears. He told me, and Daniel Holgerson read from the scores yesterday, that they just decided to cut it loose and air it out. Toon told me that they were previously trying to run it a little bit more like they did last year. That didn't need to be their identity this year. He said with weapons like Tank Dell, Matt Gold, and others, they just need to get the ball to the playmakers' hands as many times as they can, and it's clearly worked for them since. But it's really weird, though, Harry. They've run it 11 times. They've only thrown it three. This is the fourth pass of the game. Toon steps up in the pocket, but good coverage downfield, and he'll just fall across the 20 to the 20 one yard line so not really what we thought we would see although coach Holgerson said they were going to have to at least be somewhat effective running the football today in this cold weather but I think you know they've committed to running the football it's just uh, when you when they've dropped back to pass they hadn't been as solid on the edge and that, that's where they've been able to get pressure tune has to dump it off underneath Stacy Sneed the running back makes the catch there is Dana Holgerson and Boy, it's been a trying year for Coach Holgerson. Things didn't really go his, his way, and he felt like really that last game of the season when they got beat by Tulsa 37-30, he put really squarely the blame on his shoulders, just felt like they weren't really ready to handle what Tulsa did, and that was drop eight on them. Yeah, drop eight and then just really trying to force the football against that look as well. And so you're only going to get, and that's what we've had the last two plays, you're only going to get three guys rushing the football, but then where are your outlets against that type of coverage? Tune. Boy, he's had to dance around that pocket all afternoon. We'll throw on the run, and on third down, that one is incomplete. He was trying to hit Peyton Sawyer, and it's a punting situation again for Houston. They just can't seem to get it cranked up. And the one thing that Louisiana has been able to hang their hat on when you look at this team overall, you know, when you talk about even having a 6-6 six six record, it's been that defense. And so we saw it there again, you know, there, there was a – extra guy as far as they normally would rush three guys first two downs and then the third down they did bring a fourth but nobody able to get open down the field and you talked about it Toon just having to try to move around in the pocket and still try to buy some time but just there at the end just had to eventually throw it away. Guerra back to return the punt from Lane Wilkins good clean snap kick is on the way and it's Line drop taken at the 40. No fair catch called. Garrett turns the corner, and boy, that will be a short field for Louisiana after the nice return. I think a lot of folks thought maybe there was a fair catch here. Yeah, I thought it was. I mean, because you talk about just being able to get down there uh, quickly, the long snapper, but, you know, the, the Gunners do an outstanding job uh, on the edge as well, and that's them being able to block, block, you know, you talk about that outside guy to the edge. And so the long snapper, he's just got to come to balance a lot quicker. And so he slowed down like he thought he was going to fair catch it, and he never even was able to make a play on it. And so that's a tough one when you look at it because Houston had a guy there to be able to make a tackle, but he's not able to because I think he thought that there was a fair, fair catch signal call, and there was not. So from the 27-yard line, first and 10 for the Raging Cajuns. They will hand it off to Williams. Pick up a couple of yards to the 25, excuse me, Fields keeps it on that one. Fields 
Again, rushed for 491 yards this year on 117 carries, five touchdowns. How about the SMU game? Uh, excuse me. When you talk about fields, his ability, though, to give you the run game certainly allows him to do that bootleg, that short progression. We talked to him about like what Drew Brees and the Saints did, Deuce, in, in your days. Yeah, and that, that, that's one of the things that has helped him from a quarterback standpoint, just be able to – you have the traditional drop back pass, but here that's, that's a go route that he's able to throw to the outside receiver. You know, But traditionally what they want to do is give him level throws, and so you have anywhere four to four to six yards of his, 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 his quick pass. Here this is just a go route, and so he's just trying to allow his receiver to go up, uh, Peter LeBlanc, and make a play. Probably a little contact there, but, you know, the, the officials felt it was not, nothing too much there on, on it with Jalen Emery. But feels, you know, you have the intermediate, the deep ball, and the underneath throws. And that's where they felt like that he could really excel when you talk about that quick passing game. Boy, Field spins out of trouble, side arms it. And that one is incomplete, trying to hit LeJean with it. This Louisiana offense under the direction of their head coach. Coach Desimore, Tim Leger, the offensive coordinator, wide receivers coach. Those two guys know each other for a long time. They're kind of pulling the strings on the offensive side. Coach Des, of course, a former quarterback at Louisiana under Ricky Bussell. So another field goal attempt on the way for Almondaris, who hit from 42, and guess what? This one's from 42, just more in the center of the field. Kick is on the way, and this one is belted through the uprights again. So another three on the board. A nice punt return set him up for three. The college football playoff semifinals, Saturday, December 31st on ESPN. Well, before we get there, time for a little Christmas Eve tradition. And the one and only game on the football schedule tomorrow will take place in Hawaii. The Easy Post Hawaii Bowl from Honolulu, Middle Tennessee, takes on San Diego State. Blue Raiders have won four of five down the stretch. They'll face a San Diego State Aztec defense that is one of the best in the group of five. Coverage begins at 8 o'clock Eastern. That's 3 o'clock for those out in Hawaii, Deuce, in case you just happen to be out there. Uh, why, why, why didn't we get that that assignment, Dave? Because you got to go to Cleveland and watch the Saints play tomorrow. I could have missed that. <laughs> yeah, I bet I, you could have. <laughs> I, 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 I could have missed that for Hawaii, <laughs> for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, I lobbied. Just nobody was <laughs> nobody was listening. A short kick here. Full-on sprint to get to the football for Rodgers. He's coming near side to the 20, and good coverage again. Some more little extracurriculars going on, but nothing of substance. Caleb Anderson with a good special teams tackle for Louisiana. So here's this Houston offense. I mean, look, they came in here averaging 37 points a game, 465 yards of offense, but that has not been the story today. Is an, an injured Cougar on the field. Noah Guzman being attended to. No, it looks like he is in some pain. Dave, you talked about kind of after the play, these two teams going at it a little bit, and even on the special teams, whether it's been punt or kickoff, kickoff return, had a little extra there. And so Noah, a ton of pain here on this kickoff return play. Well, we saw Dana Holgerson. They've been battling injuries all season long. Coach Holgerson today also wearing the state sweatshirt in honor of his mentor and coach, Mike Leach. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. Of course, he played at Iowa Wesleyan when Hal Mummy and Mike Leach were creating this air raid offense. I mean, he was there on the ground floor of what this was all about. 
We had a chance to talk to him a little bit about that yesterday. And what you know, the other crazy aspect is you never know where things kind of lead. So we're sitting there talking, and I was telling him my first football game I ever called was in 1993. I got sent down to Florence, Alabama, Valdosta State in North Alabama. How Mummy was the coach. Mike Leach was the offensive coordinator, and I didn't know this until he said it. He was on that staff as well. So the very first game I did, we're sitting there at the same ballpark in Florence, Alabama. Uh, and he certainly has taken direction in the leadership of those two guys and has led him here to the University of Houston and another trip into the Big 12 next year. Here's two. Oh, that one could have been picked off. Probably should have been picked off. Brandon Bishop just right through his hands. Yeah, Dave, we, we, we talked off air, and we'll take another look at it. And you see Brandon Bishop, who's just playing that star position. He's just finding the dig route. He finds the dig route, and his eyes originally were, were on the quarterback, and he's just dropping into the quarterback's path. And so we, we talked about that drop eighth coverage, and that's really what Louisiana has used. They've inserted an extra guy, uh, you know, at times, particularly on third down, but that has given all kinds of trouble to this Houston offense. Pass is caught out over the 30-yard line, and that'll be a first down for Houston, a much-needed first down. Joseph Manjack is back in the lineup today. They're glad to see him. There is no Samuel Brown today. He has been suspended for this game for an action in their last game against Tulsa. So Manjack hurt in the third game of the season, but back practicing the last two weeks and picked up his 12th catch of the year. And off right side, Campbell. Seen Houston use that's a little counter. They've used the play action off of that counter look. They've run it a couple times with counter and gotten some positive yards. And that's one of the things that you have to be able to do when you talk talk about just going against a light box. You know, right now they only have five guys in that box, and so we've seen a heavy amount of run from this Houston team. But you know, also trying to get the football down the field. Two throws it out of bounds. Louisiana coaches on that far side. Tripping about something over there, maybe a hold. That's exactly what it is. They're, 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 they feel like that there's a particularly on the edge a couple of times once the quarterback has stepped up into the pocket and moving outside that his guys are getting held a little bit. And you know, I'm surprised that you haven't seen the short passing game. It looks like everything is either intermediate or deep down the field. Short passing game should be working a lot better for this Houston offense than it is. They're looking at another lengthy third down. They've got to get the ball out to the 42-yard line. Two. Pass is caught. Need a broken tackle and can't get it. It goes to Manjack. But well done by Podesclo. And it'll be fourth down and a couple of yards now for the Cougars. Or, excuse me. Yeah, fourth down and two. Two and a half. And you can see the twist, you see the stun, and that's the short passing game right there. But like you talked about, Podesco is not allowing them to get any of that yak yardage, yards after the catch. And you know, Houston is going to keep that offense at least out here right now to potentially go for it on fourth down. We've seen them be successful once and not successful on another attempt. And so this is their third time going for it on fourth down. Tune throws. There's the catch for the first down. That is Tank Dell, breaks a tackle, lost the football, but the whistle will have him down, so no recovery by Louisiana. Flowers out there in coverage for the Raging Cajuns. This is zero coverage here, and you know, when you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, that's a hard, hard task uh, for anybody, and Flowers does make the tackle. The ball comes out late. The recovery is there by Louisiana. Just taking another look at it, I think he was down. That ball pops out. Yeah, that ball Ooh. pops out. That the ball pops out, and I don't know if they're going to get a, another look at it, but that ball does pop out. And it's going to be a timeout by Louisiana yeah. to get these officials more time to look at it. But yeah. the ball definitely pops out before uh, he is down. Louisiana will take their second timeout of the half. Timeout on the field. Yeah, I think they're on to something over there. But again, the whistle blew, and was there an immediate recovery by anybody after this loose football?
Well, here it is, and the football definitely came out. The whistle blew, so now it needs to be a clear and immediate recovery by one of the teams if there will be if it will be considered a turnover but the issue is flowers had his left hand on the out of bounds paint as he touches that football it's really close so i think that might wave off your clear and immediate recovery if he's out of bounds and the ball may end up staying with houston i gotta i gotta take out the rule book and i gotta turn probably the page you know 803 to really get you know an, uh, a, a, a true definition of it because on the initial stumble you see the football start to come loose and then he finally the knee goes down the football finally comes loose but like you talked about flowers does make the recovery but his hand his left hand is out of bounds and then his right hand he touches the football and so does it go back to houston uh where they had picked up the first down i mean because you have to remember this is on fourth down and so do they they pick up the first down it goes back because you did not reestablish yourself there's a lot going on dave but we're going to get an explanation here after reviewing the play it has been determined there was a fumble however the defender was out of bounds when he when he touched the ball therefore the offense will retain the football it's hard to talk Louisiana will retain their timeout have one uh, we'll have two It's hard to think and talk in this weather down there. <laughs> yeah, the wind is uh, it, kind of just, beating our official up down there. Boy, his face is already red. But certainly a fortunate break for the Houston Cougars. And Dana Holgerson, they uh, will retain possession of the football. First down out over the 45-yard line. But that could have been a big-time blow to the Cougars' operation here in the first half with four and a half to go before intermission. Four man look from the Raging Cajuns. Two steps up. Flag comes out in the backfield. He was trying to hit Bell. And they didn't get their right guard for a hold. There's immediate pressure right there inside off of the play action. Ten yard penalty. First down. Boy, it has just been. Uh, a tough first half offensively for Houston. Let's go down to Harry. Hey guys, you saw Noah Guzman in a lot of pain there on that one play. He was taken to the locker room in a sling on that left arm. I'll keep you updated with any more updates. Thanks, Harry. It's been, you know, for this Houston team, certainly injuries have decimated them defensively. Louisiana missing Andre Jones, who declared for the draft. Their outside linebacker, a really good one. Seven and a half sacks this year. Tune on the run. Pass is caught. And out of bounds goes Carter, but he picks up the first down. They'll spot him back at the 32-yard line. So the best gain of the day for Houston, 32 yards. Yeah, and I love what they do as far as moving the quarterback right here. And you just have a deep corner route, and you're trying to rob underneath on it. That's Trahan that tried to make that play. Carter's able to keep his eyes focused on the football, and he steps out of bounds where that would have been a touchdown. But that's the first really explosive play from this offense that you've, you've had for Houston. This is just the sixth play coming up for Houston inside Louisiana territory. And they will run it with Sneed. He is stuffed. Now, Louisiana's run 14 plays inside Houston territory here in the first half. And thus, you see the 13 nothing score. And some of that is even deceiving because you had a big punt return that put you in, uh, on the plus side of the field. But that Houston defense was able to hold them to a field goal. Tune, 7 of 11 for 86 yards. Second down. Going to throw. Boy, has time. Going down the middle, looking for the touchdown. And they have it. The Cougars are on the board. 33 yards. Keyshawn Carter. Carter 
his fifth touchdown grab of the year. Dave, hey, I don't know if you can throw it any better. I mean, you talked about the time that the quarterback, Toon, had. We'll take another look at it. We'll play action, and, I mean, he just splits it. And the defenders for Louisiana, I don't know if they didn't think that the quarterback could get it there, but, I mean, both of those guys, from your safety as well as your corner, neither one of them took the proper depth on that. You know, both of them looked like they were trying to undercut it, and Toon just throws it perfectly. Well, the point after is a missile to the left. And it's no good, and some more pushing and shoving going on. So we got ourselves a seven-point game, but the Cougars needed a spark on offense, and they got it in tune with another touchdown pass. His 38th of the season. And from an offensive standpoint, I you know, you look at it. We'll just take another look at it here. A little play action, and it's a post route, and his offensive line does a nice job. And Toon places it perfectly. He places it perfectly, you know, and you talk about both of the safety as well as the cornerback not able to get there. And just taking another look at that extra point, and, man, he pushed the ball really bad on that kick. Your kicker did. And that's not your normal kicker as well. That's, uh, I think that's Ramsey kicking today because the regular kicker got hurt. Yeah, Ramsey. Got the job last week, went three out of three against Tulsa in that season finale, but misses that extra point there. So three minutes to go in a 13 to six ball game here at the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana, 46th edition of this game. So Ramsey will kick it away. This is returnable. John tripped up. Time to get our first studio update. What's going on, Zubin? Dave Deuce, thanks. Coming up at the half, we'll get Trevor's first half thoughts. He's got some very interesting numbers. He's been digging inside the Houston offense. We'll have that with you. And we'll introduce you to the most inspirational person you'll see during any game of Capital One Bowl Mania, who's on the verge of college football history. All that and more coming up at the half, Dave. All right, I'll be watching. Deuce might be trying to find some food, but I'll be watching. Or some hot tea. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking <laughs> yeah, for some hot tea. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> looking for some hot tea. Food, I'll probably pass on, but any hot tea, I'll definitely take it. And we had some after the play action there. I mean, the special teams unit, both sides, you know, they have gotten after it a little bit. And another penalty, special team wise, and whether it's been Houston or Louisiana, special teams, man, they, they, they have been chirping at each other. Louisiana offense under the direction of Fields. He's 11 of 16 for 89 yards and a touchdown, but they are backed up just outside the 10-yard line. First down and 10. Both teams are actually Houston with three timeouts, Louisiana with two timeouts. Gain of about three on the play. So that one goes to Chris Smith. Smith around the right side. He's out to the 25-yard line. That'll be a first down. That's a gain of 11. And Caesar thought he had a tackle for a moment. Yeah, you see Smith is used a little track and field, hurtling over, going low. And nice job, Emery trying to come up, cut him down. And Chris Smith goes over the top to pick up the first down. Over the middle, pass is caught. Nice catch there from Lance Lejean. That's a gain of 15. Coach is saying we were going to see a lot of him without Michael Jefferson, their leading receiver, who's opted out of playing today to get ready for the draft. And here's a guy that certainly they can 
build around. He's just now learning how to play the position. Houston has taken the first time out of the half. Please reset the game clock to 1-5-4, 154. Well, the annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition continues. Five star-studded games on ESPN and ABC. Sixers and Knicks start the day at noon Eastern. Then it's Lakers-Mavs. That's kind of a train wreck or a train wreck worth watching, I think. The Lakers right now. Bucks, celtics Grizzlies-Warriors, Suns-Nuggets. All capped the night every year. Some of the best games in the NBA on Christmas Day. Chandler Fields off to a good start here. 12 of 17. For more on him, let's go down to Harry. Yeah, guys, when I spoke with him during the week, he said the biggest challenges for him during his roller coaster season were just staying mentally strong, positive, and making sure he was there for his teammates. Obviously, he started out the season as the starting quarterback. He had a grade two AC joint sprain that helped him lose his job due to that injury, but he told me he believes everything's happened for a reason. He was in every meeting, every practice, and running back Chris Smith actually told me, hey, we already respected the guy, but after watching him stick that out, we have even more respect for him, and they're glad he's back out there leading them now. Yeah, that could have been a dicey situation when he came back and they didn't give him the job that he had before. Spence out over the 45 to the 46. Ben Woolridge, things kind of just started clicking offensively with Woolridge, and we were talking to Coach Dez about it, Tim Leger, the offensive coordinator, and just, you know, Fields took it in stride. Did everything right because you just never know when that job's going to come back to you. Yeah, you talk about just getting the opportunity and just having to stay ready and from a mental aspect of it. That's what he was able to do. You, know, you go through that whole process during the summer and then being able to finally win it right there at camp and then losing it, that's a lot. Woolrich towards ACL in practice before the Florida State game back in mid-November. So on third and a yard, they run for it and get nothing. They go with Williams. And he is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. So now it's fourth down and about a half a yard. And Coach Dez wants a timeout, and he'll take it. So taking, taking that timeout, I probably would have ran off a little bit more time if I was definitely going to go for it. I mean, you've shown offensively that you can be explosive. But taking that timeout so early, you know, it was probably interesting. I probably would have forced Houston to maybe take that timeout. And just a nice job just trying to run a little – cutback play and just a nice job defensively uh, Donovan Mouton being able to come up and make that play right there from his linebacker position. Louisiana down to their final timeout. Cougars have two left under a minute to go second quarter. Louisiana has Really played well, uh, other than the big play for the touchdown, the 33-yard touchdown pass. They've actually kept this high-powered Houston offense at bay. We've done, been able to win at the line of scrimmage. I mean, I, I think that's, you know, particularly on passing downs, they've been able to disrupt them enough. Fourth and short. Oh, and they get some contact up front. And now here's the finger point. Let's see what they decide to do here. It looked to me like Houston jumped. Offside, defense with contact, number 10. Five yard penalty results in a first down. Well, Chidozi Wankwo, the man they call Dot, has had an outstanding year. It almost looked like he got pushed by his own defender. By, by Nunner, yeah. <laughs> By Nunnery, it looked like he kind of pushed him a little bit. I mean, because he's oh, he's playing the nose. He's right over the football. And you always talk about the voice inflection of the quarterback and, you know, maybe him running up there quick. But I don't know without the push if he goes over into the neutral zone. There's Field bootlegging it near side, being chased. Throw. It's caught by a Cougar, but out of bounds. Owens was there, but. It'll just go down as an incomplete pass. Second down with. <laughs> second, second time we've seen this, you know, just right there on the edge. Uh, when you get outside, if nothing's, nothing's there, throw it away. 
you know, that's the second time, you know, when you look at it from the Houston Cougars' perspective that they almost had a potential interception just off of a bootleg, just a quarterback trying to be probably a little bit too greedy there uh, at the end. 49 seconds on the clock. A rush four. Quick throw behind the intended receiver. They were trying to get it to the tight end, Neil Johnson. So now third down and ten. Let's see if defensive coordinator Doug Belk wants to bring a little heat here on third down and ten or drop eight. They'll line up with four. On the line of scrimmage. They'll bring an extra rusher, and Louisiana runs it with Fields. He'll get it inside the 40, a gain of eight. Chandler Fields keeps. Game's eight. And no man land, and now they're going to use another timeout here to talk about it. Kick, what, two 42 yard field goals. This is probably a little bit longer than that. And so you talked about Dave bringing pressure, and it was pressure off of the slot. They checked to a quarterback draw, and you're able to pick up, you know, some pretty good yardage on that play. Well, the college football playoff semifinals are set for Saturday, December 31st on ESPN. And, of course, you can always watch it on the ESPN app. Number two, Michigan takes on number three, TCU, in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl at 4 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific, three Pacific, I should say. And then it's number one, Georgia, and number four, Ohio State, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The winners will play Monday, January 9th on ESPN. So 31 seconds on a fourth down and three. Of course, you'll get a few extra seconds here if they pick up the first down. But no timeouts left for Louisiana. They'll hand it off for the first down. Chris Smith, boy, a lot of motion, a lot of eye candy, and they end up Chris just handing it to Smith, who picks up the first down. They pop up in a hurry after a gain of five. Down to 20 seconds. Fields looking to throw. Has a man down around the 15 to the 12-yard line. That'll get another Louisiana first down. And they do have an extra timeout. I thought they did because they got a timeout back. Well, you got a you got a late hit on the quarterback here. You got two flags yeah. here, and your Chandler Fields. But you got to get that timeout back, and the, the scoreboard here did not reset after Personal they were. Foul. Number 17, defense, low hit on the quarterback. That penalty will be enforced half the distance of the goal from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Timeout, Louisiana. The third and final. It'll be 30 seconds. Boy, just mass confusion on these timeouts, but I thought they had one left, and they do. So Louisiana burns it, and the ball will be spotted down the right around the five yard line. You really have to be uh, Lance LeJohn, his development. I mean, because we knew that they talked about going to him, but I didn't think it would be on these types of routes as far as some of the in cuts. And we saw him be able to run some stops and maybe a slant route earlier on his first catch. But you know, he's done a nice job of just being able to get the numbers, getting it, showing his numbers to the quarterback. And there you see Chandler Fields kind of take a late hit, low hit, roll up on his ankle a little bit. And he's able to limp back out there pretty good amount you know and they've ran at least quarterback design runs a couple of times and he's been able to pick up some yardage first and goal from the five yard line nine seconds to go before halftime fields over the middle and incomplete right through the hands of Neil Johnson but man, that thing came in there hot. 
Definitely high than Neil Johnson outside. We just take another look at it. You know, just trying to use his big body to get him a catch. And I'm probably going to use him as far as a jump ball type of throw or some type of rub. You know, uh, he's, he's had a couple of catches, but, you know, just running a slant, slant route inside or I don't think that's using him to his best skill set, particularly when you talk about just creating mismatches for guys. So a 22-yard field goal attempt on the way from Kenneth Almendares. He's hit from 42 twice, and this one is blasted through the uprights as well. So a three for three first half for the Louisiana kicker. And the Ragin' Cajuns with two seconds on the clock lead this one 16 to six. Dave, I don't know about that. I, I don't even. <laughs> there are no words. Well, Houston will get the football first to start the third quarter. That is good news for the Cougar fans, but certainly this has not been the kind of offensive game that the Cougars were hoping for. Again, a team that's averaging over 33 points a game. Well, you're talking about a team also, when you talk about averaging 33 points a game, uh, 11 out of 12 of the games, they've scored over 30 points, and right now you only have six uh, as you go into the halftime. So uh, they can adjust. They can adjust. They can still go out there and put points on the board. But when you look at it, Louisiana has done a really nice job of get, being able to flood the zone area, but also being able to bring pressure on third down opportunities as well. Clayton, too, has thrown for 3,800 yards this year. But in this first half, he has been held to 119 on 8 of 12. One hopper. Taken by Rodgers, and then he is hit immediately, and that'll do it for the first half. Boy, a good first half for the Rage and Cajuns. Led by their quarterback, Chandler Fields. 13 of 21, a buck 25, and a touchdown. They put up over 200 yards of offense, and they hold the Cougars to 121. Let's go down to Harry Lyles. Coach, you guys held them to six points in that first half with a prolific yeah. offense. What was the key to that? Well, our defense is flying around. You know, we're finding a way to get some pressure with three guys up front. Um, I think Coach Morgan, our defensive staff, has done a great job mixing it up. Pressure's dropping. Um, you know, but you know what they have on offense. You've got to keep doing it. And then offensively, you guys are moving the football, three field goals in that first half. How do you convert on some of those, turn those field goals into touchdowns? Yeah, well, you know, the last drive kind of run out of time a little bit. The other ones, you know, uh, the, the second field goal we kicked, uh, I tried to take a couple shots to get it in there. The first one, you know, we just uh, got behind the sticks a little bit, you know, and then some of that's play calling. You know, I, I've taken some shots trying to get a big one, and uh, when you don't cash in, that's kind of what happens a little bit. So, you know, we got to stick to what we're doing, keep doing a good job. I got to let our kids just go play because uh, we're moving the ball well. Uh, we're playing really hard, and, uh, you know, I knew that was going to be a big part of it this week. Go get warm. We're going to try. <laughs> Desermo. Quarterback back in 2006, played Houston, won that ball game, trying to do the same here in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. Time to get to the studios. Zubin, it's all yours. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. And welcome back to the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania from a chilly Shreveport, Louisiana. And the Ragin' Cajuns from Louisiana leading this one 16 to six, moments away from third quarter football. Dave Neal alongside my partner, Deuce McAllister. And Deuce, really, the story here is Houston's offense. Uh, it's been a point machine, a yardage machine, but not here in the first half, just a little over 100 yards. How do they get this thing turned around? Well, I think they have to play with a little tempo, and then I think for me, you have to move the quarterback a little bit and get him outside of the pocket. You know, we knew he threw a, a nice ball as far as to a post route, but they've been able to get pressure, really, Louisiana has with that front three. And so all of it has not been drop coverage. They've, I don't want to say confused them, but they had him off rhythm. So move him out of the pocket a little bit, and I think that's where they've got to find some tempo and some success. Houston will get the football first here in the second half. And there is Clayton Toon, who was really kept in check. 
For a young man that is uh, wrapping up his career and this year threw for 37 touchdowns and 10 picks in the regular season, does have a touchdown in this one. But only eight of 12 throwing the football for less than 100 yards. He did get, you know, one thing we forgot about really is, you know, I think it was the first drive, maybe second drive. He got twisted up on a tackle behind the line and came up limping and didn't look like that bothered him too much. But uh, certainly it was a, an awkward look to say the least. So here's the kick from Leo. It is short, taken around the 13-yard line by Rodgers. And he is out over the 30. Little Harry Lyles down the sidelines. He had a chance to catch up with Coach Hol uh, Holgerson. I wonder what that conversation was like. Yeah, he wasn't particularly happy. He basically listed off everything that you could possibly do in a football game and said that they needed to do that better and then <laughs> concluded by saying anything you can do football related, we need to do it better in the second half, guys. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Anything football related, we have to do better. Yeah, and he didn't he, he he obviously was not very pleased with how they went out and played offensively, defensively. I think that they've done some pretty good things, but offensively he knows they have to get rolling. On first down and 10, they'll keep it on the ground in a big hole right between the guards as Henry picks up 12 yards and a good start for the Cougars. And you can hear that bench getting a little excited down there. They were quiet in the first half. Well, emotion definitely strong. And I think, you know, that when you go back and look at it, the first four plays for them offensively, they were run plays. And so that was a little bit of su su surprising in a sense. But if they're going to have a light box and only put three to, I mean, uh, five guys in that box, you have to, you have to run against that look. So from the 42-yard line, they'll line up in the pistol formation. They'll run it again with Henry. This time, no room. Got back to the line of scrimmage and stopped in his tracks. Henry again on the carry. Minimal gain on the plays. Zion Hill Green leading the charge there, the fifth-year senior who has just been an awesome defensive player. 21 career sacks, tied for the most in Louisiana history, first team all Sun Belt Conference. Three man front. There you go. They move tune like you were talking about. They complete the pass near midfield. That one goes to Manjack. Gain of six. And I think that's one of the things that Clayton can do well when you talk about it, just throwing uh, off, off not having to be just dropping back into the pocket. He can move around a little bit. He can be off target a little bit with his footwork. He's going to do a nice job of being able to come to balance and be able to get the proper stance that he wants to do. But that's what they have to do with him a little bit. Stacy Sneed in at running back now to the left of Toon. Looking to throw here. Looks to the right, now comes back to the left. Decides to tuck it and run. And he'll have the first down around the 45 yard line. So Toon picks up seven more yards. Offensive line does a nice job of just being able to give him time and you know, right there on the edge. He's able to step up into the middle of that pocket and pick up the yardage needed for a first down. First three drives of this game, Houston just went 46 yards. Their last drive of the First half went 80 yards. Toon was 5 of 6 for 87 yards on that drive. They had a big penalty, which is why he had more yards than the drive itself. Handoff goes to Sneed, and he is wrapped up and tossed to the turf. Braylon Trahan with the stop for Louisiana. and you want to see if you can get the football down the field, maybe some type of shot play we know earlier. Now, on the one play, Dave, where you talked about it, where Clayton Toon kind of got turned around a little bit was a shot play. Wide open and dropped at the 30-yard line. Keyshawn Carter was wide open. Nobody within five, six yards of him and just couldn't hold on to it. Just running this out route and just got to catch it. Looked like he tried to cradle it instead of grabbing and snatching it out of the air. 
Uh, he wasn't worried about the sideline right there, but now you put him in a third and long situation, and those are the ones that you cannot drop, particularly when you offensively you haven't put up the numbers, particularly points like you normally do. Third down. Well, they're going to run for it with Campbell. Cuts it back and has the first down at the 34-yard line. Really like this call here, Dave. There was pressure off of the right side. We'll take another look at it. There was pressure off of the right side, and then there was also motion. And so by running outside zone, motioning away from where you're going to run, their shorter guy as far as a force player is concerned, no one on that edge was able to win on the edge, and so that's why you were able to turn up and be able to get the yardage needed for a first down. Still go with the three-man front on first down. A oh, little flea flicker. Deep down the middle. Pass is knocked away. Two raging Cajuns back there trying to hit Tank Dell with it. Just taking a look. This is the shot play. This is pushing the football down the field, and you you talked about just hitting Dale, and you just see the separation that he's able to get. It. And really a nice job right there at the end. By Trey Amos just being able to knock it away, and Dale's leg kind of catches the end of the back of that uh, goal post as well. But Amos able to knock that football away. So the separation that he's able to create as well. Second down. Over the middle, and this one's incomplete. They were trying to hit Matt Burns with it. It's a vertical route for your, for your tight end. It's going to be a tough catch, and that's one that you want to be able to hold on to. Nice job there by the safety, kind of pulling up a little bit, or yep. Trahan not, get, not getting a def defenseless hit on the receiver there, but just trying to hit the seam route to the tight end. Raylan Trahan, all first team Sun Belt performer back there at that safety position for Louisiana. Here comes some heat by the Raging Cajuns. Pass is caught by Dell, but immediately hit on the spot. A late flag here. Portland Flowers back there. Late Working flag against is, Bell. Yeah, it's going to be against. I think, this gonna, I think this is going to be a, a late flag here. I think this is going to be against Louisiana. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 13 defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. We're calling that against Amir McDaniel. I think it's Peterson. It's, I think the referee had the uh, numbers wrong. Yeah, that's not where the, 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 the penalty didn't come there. It was against the offensive lineman. It was against the offensive lineman is where the penalty happened. And it was actually Peterson. Well, whoever it was on it. <laughs> Going to set up Houston inside the 15-yard line. 67% touchdowns inside the red zone this year for the Cougar offense. This is play number 11 of the opening drive of the third quarter. A handoff, some running room for Henry. He'll get down to the seven-yard line. Amos runs him out of bounds, but a gain of eight. Louisiana came into this game about a touchdown underdog, but leading it by 10. Houston with a much more motivated offense here to start the third quarter. And they've had to be methodical as well. We know they took you know one of the shots down the field, but you know everything has really been intermediate to underneath, and they've taken advantage of it. Out of that pistol, running with Henry again. A little stutter step to the five. Look at the offensive line push him down around the two-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Cougars, and they are knocking on the door here on this opening drive after a five-yard pickup. 
Henry may not be a big guy, but you see his start, his stop and start ability, and just there, there was penetration. There was a lot of penetration there by that Louisiana defense, and he was able to just stop and start and make guys miss. And like you talked about, Dave, at the end, he ends up picking up five yards. Three tight ends set for the Cougars on first down and goal. Henry stays in the game at running back. They'll fake it to him. Toon looking to throw. Over the middle, the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Tank Dell with another one. That's number 16 on the year. Take another look at it, Dave, and it, he, he really just wins at the line of scrimmage. You know, he's probably open, and Amos is covering him, but he's all the way. I mean, he's trail technique all the way, and he won at the line of scrimmage, and it was just, hey, look, can my quarterback find me? Can my quarterback find me? Because after the first, right there with the release, Bob Bell, you know, he, he was open. Kyle Ramsey missed his first extra point, but converts on that one and Houston off to a good start here in the third quarter a lengthy methodical drive five minutes 30 seconds off the clock boy back in Shreveport a cold Shreveport Louisiana it is the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl. Dave Neal, Deuce McAllister, Harry Lyles down on the sidelines. Again, at least we think he's down there. If I was Harry, I'd be finding me a warm spot somewhere in the building. Although Harry's been gutting it out, though, in the first half. He's layered properly, hung in there. Here's a little pooch kick. That's going to hit at the 25. Loose football on the Raging Cajuns. LeJean falls on it wisely at the 27 yard line hey the mega cast is back for the college football semifinals on december 31st now there are nine different viewing options for each semifinal the field pass with the pat mcafee show presented by mercedes-benz on espn2 will of course feature pat mcafee then robert griffin the third cole kubelik aj hawk darius butler and more providing analysis and interviews from the sidelines the mega cast lineup also includes command center at&t 5g skycast the all 22 Hometown radio calls for all four teams, and the pregame and halftime marching band performances, of course, will be on the ESPN app. That is just a buffet of football for you. Whatever you like, you have it right there. Fields first pass caught. Nice out route to John Stevens, and that's a first down to the 40-yard line. Talked about a low snap. Chandler Fields was able to handle it and to still be on time and on target with that throw. Nice deep out right there for a completion. Lose football, the Cougars have it. Chris Smith, I don't know if it was a clean handoff or not, but the ball hit the turf immediately. And Cedric Williams comes up with the recovery and the Cougars are in business. That's how you create some excitement and some emotion for a defense. And, Dave, I do think he had it, but with the penetration right there that he was able to get, he not only knocked it out of Chris Smith's hand, but he's able to recover the fumble. And so, from a defensive standpoint, that's almost, you know, just like coming up with a strip sack. That time you create the fumble by Cedric Williams, you create the fumble by Williams, but also you're able to recover it and you give your offense outstanding Field position. Off the left side, gain of about five to the 29 yard line by Stacy Sneed. Stacy Sneed. And Louisiana has a hurt defensive lineman that's down. Tyon Hill Green. Boy, Zion Hill Green, fifth year senior. We've talked about him in the 
kind of season he has. Played in 62 games, 250 career tackles. He has just been a monster. Let's hope he's okay. Back in a moment. To continuously improve care. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all out there as we are closing in on favorite day of many of the children around the country. Certainly as the Raging Cajuns lead by three and it is a cold, festive day here in Shreveport. Both the bands made it to Independent Stadium here in Shreveport today. Battling through the elements. On second down. Houston will throw for it, going up top and incomplete out of bounds. Heck of a stab there by Dell. Amos on the coverage. By the way, Zion Hill Green got up and was walking off the field under his own power a moment ago. We'll see if we can get an update on his status. Yeah, if Dell doesn't have to try to double catch this and you see him try to drag that right foot. Uh, if that ball just a little bit better placement, and that, that, that's a completion right there for Clayton Toon and, and, and Dale, but he had to double catch it there. There's a look at Zion. It's under review. And so the officials want to take another look at it to see if he did have control of it, but it was the bobble. I think he, he, he bobbled it right there on the edge. And they want to take another look at it. I think he, I mean, I think that that's pretty clear that he's out of bounds. It was called out, but it was the, the, the grab. He doesn't get complete control of it until he's out of bounds. Well, look how much he bounces off that turf. Brand new field here, been in a couple of weeks. It's actually the first event on this turf. They play high school football in the stadium, but the seasons were over and they Installed the turf. Somebody's going to have to get that. There's a patch down there, probably on both sides of the field, that somebody's going to have to replace. I'm going to send them your number and your information, Dave. Well, somebody turned the heaters up too hot. That burnt the brand new turf. <laughs> About five minutes into the game, we got an update from Harry down there that they had to shut the heaters off because it was Man. burning the field. Can't turn them on super high. <laughs> I don't think the players are very happy about that. But the officials are taking a long look about it. And, and, and you see what is, is in the officials' hands? It's a hand warmer. See, there's the bobble. He's down there. Does he have possession? See, I don't think he. Well, the ball moves again. Yeah. He, ha he has it against his body. He has it against his body, but. And you saw him dragging the foot to be able to have control and possession. But I don't know if he had enough control and possession inbound. Again, if you're just joining us and you see Dana Holgerson walking around with that state sweatshirt on, that's in honor of his uh, mentor and good friend Mike Leach today. He flew to Starkville earlier this week for the remembrance of Mike Leach. Boy, some great impassioned speeches from the likes of Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley, Greg Sankey of the Southeastern Conference. Uh, had a chance to watch that. It was just a very moving day for one of the most unique individuals to ever coach football at the collegiate level, at, really at any level. And Coach Leach would tell you, you know, hey, look, uh, I just want to be able to teach the game, and you know, sometimes we make it too hard. We make the game harder than it should be. <laughs> we had, of course, you and I do a lot of SEC football, and 
we had Mississippi State in the bowl game last year. It just reminds me, trying to get ready for that game last year, we're trying to catch up with Coach, and, and he is Christmas shopping and talking to everybody while he's trying to Incomplete talk to us. pass has been confirmed. Well, that took a long time. Yeah, they wanted to confirm that it was incomplete. It would we have been could have explosive. told them that. Yeah, they wanted to make sure. Us. They wanted to make sure. But, I mean, it would have definitely been an explosive play for Houston. But, yeah, just Dave. Coach Leach was out shopping. I mean, he was out shopping and, you know. Buying coffee at yeah, Starbucks. And, and Starbucks <laughs> and every other other place, you know. And he, he had, he knew exactly where he wanted to go for some of the things. And some people didn't have it. And, you know, it was just like, oh, you know, I got to talk football with you guys. Not, not about coffee. Go on third down. Matthew Golden, the true freshman, with another catch. Boy, they're high on this young man. 36 catches Matthew during the regular Matthew season. Golden. Freshman touchdown receiving record for the Cougar program with seven of those in his first go round at the collegiate level. Freshman out of Houston, Texas. That's the second time that Golden has caught the ball on third down. He's got to learn to yeah. get north and south. He's going too much east and west. If he catches that screen and go ahead and put his foot in the ground and get north and south, he may pick up that fourth down, but his offense is going to stay out on the field. Fourth down and a yard and a half. They'll go with Snead at tailback. Over the middle, wide open. Pass is caught, first down inside the 15-yard line goes Matt Burns. That's a gain of 13. Pressure again from Louisiana defense and looked like they dropped the coverage there and you, you leave the tight end open and he makes you pay. Houston now three out of four on fourth down conversions today. On first down, they'll hand it to Sneed. And he is pushed back after he got back to the line of scrimmage by Chris Moncrief. And the Cougars with an opportunity here to tie or take the lead on this possession. Offensively, they looked a lot better as well. We saw that on first drive, they come out and they would put points on the board and get the football right back because of the turnover from their defense and they're threatening again. The run it with Snead, trying to find a little bit of room to run, but nothing there. Wibodeau with the stop, second team all Sun Belt performer. Led the team in tackles in the regular season with 101 and has five this afternoon. Last couple of possessions on third down, there's been pressure from this Louisiana defense and not able to get there. They'll start with a three down front and normally add a fourth guy to that mix and you'll see them use the twist stunts up front as well. Campbell in the game at running back. Looks like they're going to throw it here. Toon looking over the middle, nowhere to throw. Will tuck it and run. Lowers his shoulder and gets it down to the five-yard line. And boy, a big collision. He'll be shy of the first down by about a yard and a half. Well, you can see why this guy at 6'3", 220 has been able to run for 500 yards this year. And he does a nice job. He doesn't force anything, you know, until we talked about, I uh, just talked about how they were able to bring a fourth guy, an uh, add-on guy uh, on third down. That time they just dropped eight into coverage and Toon does not try to force it, tries to pick up that first down with his legs and he gets very close and you know, they, they, they have not been afraid to go for it and they'll do so again here. Three tight ends on fourth down. High snap off the left side. They're going with Campbell. Boy, both teams saying they did their jobs. Let's see who actually won the battle at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Louisiana, they may have stuffed him here. It'll come down to the spot. Official timeout for measurement. And for us, we, we didn't have the best view of where the official had them marked at, and they're going to measure it to see if they convert it.
Not going to get it done. And Louisiana stands up. And the Raging Cajuns will have possession inside the five-yard line. Coach Holgerson has been rolling the dice all game on fourth downs. Now three out of five on fourth down conversions. Looked like a scoring opportunity for the Cougars, but Louisiana comes out of there with the football. Take a look at today's clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle and for that first quarter football. Way back, opening drive. As Lumpkin makes a heck of a catch in the corner of the end zone. You're looking at a 6'6", 265-pound tight end. Doing a little ballet dance in the corner of the end zone for the first score of the game. And so far, Louisiana has led from the outset. And they just did dodge one there, getting a fourth down stop. Fields will throw it. Pass caught there by another one of those Louisiana tight ends. Pierce Smeagle with his 16th catch of the year. They like their tight ends. Neil Johnson came in with 22 catches. Meagle 15. Johnny Lumpkin with 14. They'll split the tight ends out. Empty set. Chandler Fields comes near side. Pass caught there again by Meagle. He'll get it out over the 20 to the 21, so a good six-yard pickup on first down. Art hey. Green now with six tackles for Houston. David, just to follow up a little bit about those tight ends, you've got to be able to uh, replace some of that production of, of Michael Jefferson. And so getting that room a little bit more involved definitely replaces it. And then it also helps the quarterback because I mean, that, that's an easier throw to some of those outlets as far as the tight ends. Michael Jefferson, their outstanding wide receiver, opted out of this game to get ready for the draft. There is Fields on the run. He'll get it to the 24-yard line. Looks like he's going to be about a yard shy of the line to gain. A late flag here. Officials are not letting guys get away with some of the stuff earlier that they probably were allowing them to get away with. We talked about the chirping that had gone on between these two teams, particularly on special teams, has spilt over offensively and defensively. Maybe after the play on Johnny Lumpkin. The result of the play, is the runner was short of the line to gain. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 12, defense, or, excuse me, offense, half the distance to the goal. The down counts, it'll be third down. Boy, LeJean, watch him come in late with a little push. What are you doing? I mean, really, what are you doing? I, Lumpkin, I apologize. That was LeJean, and that was right in front of the official. Not needed whatsoever. And now you talk about a third in inches to being a third and long situation for an offense that has only possessed the ball for this is the second possession for him this half. Man, you're thinking about a third down and a few feet. Now it's third and 12. You swing it to the outside, Williams. And now you got to punt it away. Terrence Williams with the reception. Brings up fourth down for the Cajuns. So here comes Burns to punt it away. He'll stand just outside the goal line. Peyton Sawyer back to return it. He stands at the Cougar 40. Burns does have the wind behind his back. A little rugby style kick. Fielded at the 42-yard line. Boy, nice little stutter step to create some room. Sawyer down the sideline and out of bounds. They will spot him around the 34-yard line. A short field coming up for the Houston Cougars. 
Time to roll the machine back. Late 90s. You might remember this, Deuce. I'm just guessing you did. How about 1999? In this bowl game right here, a huge day for the Rebels in old number 22. Longest run, and you have the record for the longest run in Independence Bowl history. Remember that night? I do remember it, and it was, you can tell, it was not nearly as cold as it, as it is now. But, I mean, uh, that, that game, that was right before uh, Oklahoma goes on the streak that they went on to win the uh, the national championship. And that was, uh, what was it, Y2K? I think that bowl, yeah, that's, what that's that bowl right. Game was. 99 season, 2000 bowl game, yeah. Pass is caught around the 22-yard line. Man, Jack. The fourth has been involved today. Good to see him back after missing most of the season. He only, only practiced a couple of weeks to get ready for this game. And he's done a pretty good job when they've targeted him as far as being able to come up with the receptions. And he's going to be a big, big piece of what they want to do going forward. Here's Toon. He looked right now, dumps it off underneath. Boy, nice little stutter step by Henry to give himself an opportunity to pick up an extra five or six yards. He's inside the 10, down to the 8, and another first down. The Cougars are rolling now. Well, you can tell the momentum has changed uh, for, for this Houston offense, really for this Houston team. They, they're playing with a lot more emotion, a lot more fire than they were the first half, and it's showing. And flags will stop this one. I think they're going to get a false start on yeah. the right tackle. False start. Number 74, offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Let's go down to Heron. Because it is 100% because the heaters are back on down here. I don't know if they're <laughs> supposed to be, but these heaters are back on down here. The guys are smiling a heck of a lot more because yeah. they are. And you uh, sound better. Hey, you know, I'm just saying, do the math. <laughs> I did. And it sounds like you found the heater. That's what it sounds like. Harry said his blood flow is working again. <laughs> uh, so... First and goal now, but the ball sits way back at the 13-yard line. Louisiana rushing four. Toon slides out to the right. He's to the 10, and he'll get out of bounds around the 8-yard line. Well, in all-time Houston Cougar football games, this will rank as the second coldest of course, the game in 1990, uh, 1979 against Notre Dame was 20 degrees. Maryland and Tulsa. By the way, the first game Houston ever played as a college football team was against Louisiana. Really? How about that back in 1946? And here they square off in the final game of the 2022 season. Right before the Cougars moved to the Big 12 next year. Tune couldn't get out of trouble. He'll be dropped back at the 13-yard line. Tune is sacked on the play. Boy, an injured raging Cajun down there on the field. For defensive injury. It's got to be Peterson that's hurt. Yeah, the outside backer. Marion Peterson, the redshirt freshman out of New Orleans, is the one down. But here's another look at that sack. Zion Hill Green with that pressure, and Peterson right there at the edge. Oh, it was an offensive lineman fell on his ankle, and he's able to get up and walk off the field. But it was a lineman fell on his ankle as he was right there at the end trying to bring down Clayton Toon. Peterson was a good get for Louisiana. They chose the Raising Cajuns over the likes of Arizona, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Purdue. And he's one of those young guys that's filling in for Andre Jones, who we talked about that they were really, really high on getting more opportunity because Jones is not available. So that will be the final play of the third quarter, and certainly old Mr. Moe is standing on the sidelines of the Houston Cougars as we enter the final 15 minutes. They were down in this area on their last possession, but turned it over on downs. They've got a third down and goal coming up from the 13 on the other side. 
This one's coming down to the wire, which has kind of been the norm for the Cougars this year. Well, the Houston Cougars in another close game here, 16-13 as they're knocking on the door. But they've had seven one-score games today. And amongst those seven one-score games have been three overtime games. I mean, it all started. They opened up the year with a three-overtime game. Then they had a two-overtime game the very next week against Texas Tech. And then Tulane went to overtime as well. They won a couple of games in the final minute. Most of these games have just come down to the final possession for that man. It has been a crazy year. It's one of those you could say what if, but I mean, it could, what if could go either way. Yeah, it could go either <laughs> way for him. I mean, but when you look at it, this score right here, this is normal for them. Two to throw, lofts it up, flag is down. I think there might have been a little jump by Zion Hill Green at the initial part of that play and then a flag in the back of the end zone. So the offsides would have only moved him up, but the pass interference is gonna should be an automatic first down for him. The offsides would have just moved him up. Yeah, until so you talk about the, the free play, but it's the pass interference that should give him the automatic first down. Caleb Anderson tugging on the shoulder of Matthew Golden. Two fouls by the defense. Offside, number four. That penalty's declined. Pass interference, number 11, defense. That penalty will be enforced to the two yard line as the foul occurred in the end zone. Automatic first down. Boy, this second half has been very similar to what Houston's regular season was like. They got off to a slow start, first half of the season, second half of the season. They got their offense cranked up, started averaging over seven yards of play. They had over 2,500 yards of offense in the second half of the season. And they have turned things around here as they break the huddle in a hurry. First and goal from about the two-yard line. They'll throw it. Tune just over the outstretched hands of Tank Dell. Trey Amos back there in coverage. Already one touchdown catch today for Dell. Yeah, just taking a little look at it. You talk about a just go route and Dale. He tries to create some separation and it kind of throws the timing off as he just tried to take a stab at the defender a little bit to create some separation and that threw the timing off between he and Tune. Boy, in the third quarter, Houston had the football for 12 minutes and 24 seconds. Three tied in set. Toon keeps it. And he is hammered right back at the line of scrimmage. Toon keeps. Zion Hill Green will get credit for the tackle. And just looking at it, you go with QB power right there. And Zion Hill is able to come up with the play. Third down and goal. They'll run it again. Here's Henry. He is stuffed. So now it's fourth down and goal. What do you do here, Deuce? Take the points. <laughs> take the points. You've been down here before. You didn't do it. And it looks like they're going to take the points. Take the points. Right, you gave the offense an opportunity on the last drive to get it done. You didn't cash in. Right. And now I give it another opportunity inside the five, and I can't cash in. But Henry, he, he, he hesitated down there on the goal line. Right there, even if you get low, you've got to figure out, you can't pause on the goal line. You can't pause on third down. And he just hesitated too much, and that's why they were not successful. Here's Ramsey on the kick. This one from 19, and he splits the uprights, and we are now all tied at 16. Long way to go here in the fourth quarter. All square between the Rage and Cajuns and the Cougars. In Shreveport, Louisiana for the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl. And we've got some NFL football coming your way as the countdown crew has you covered for week 16 with a special Saturday Christmas Eve edition at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And the Monday night countdown crew gets you set for Chargers Colts at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, both on ESPN and the ESPN app. A man right there. Now that is a give him a 100 on that mullet. Man, that thing is that, that's a work of art right there. It's a, it's a craft. Hulk also goes out and he gets a tee after the kickoff. Tied at 16. OK, 
Scherer takes it out to the 20, and he is stopped in his tracks there. And there goes Hawk to get the tee. Go, Hawk, go. No way. Yeah. Oh, Look yeah. at my man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's that, normally, a, like, it's normally a, a, a roll right here at the end. <laughs> You can't make that up. You cannot make that up. And the only reason I know he did the belly roll earlier, he did it earlier. We missed it, though. Come on. Just a tad bit short there. I mean, I've seen some great things this year, but that is the top of my list. Thank you, Hawk. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's not forget it's 20 degrees. <laughs> so a change of quarterback for a, a moment. As I'm laughing too hard, Zeon Chris comes in and gets a few reps at quarterback now as Chandler Fields watches the true freshman from Baton Rouge. He'll hand it off to Chris Smith. Ball Morris with his fourth tackle. And what's interesting here, it just has to be a change of pace. And Chris is probably more of the runner when you look at it, but you know, this is only the third possession of the half. The first play, you know, it was a deep out, and then that second play, it was a fumble. Second possession, you kind of got bogged up. You were backed up, and you know, they really hadn't possessed the ball a lot this second half. Oh, there goes Chris Smith trying to turn the corner, has the first down. That's a gain of six. Zeon Chris, though, out of Madison Prep Academy. Played some in their last game against Texas State. They won 41-13 to get bowl eligible, and he was five of six in that game for 84 yards and a touchdown. One of those coach, uh, guys coaches loves. You know, he's a winner. He won a state championship in football, won a state championship in basketball, finished third in the javelin in the state of Louisiana, and throws a bullet there. Caught by Stevens across the middle at midfield. That's another first down. That's a pickup of 13. And you can see just the arm, the accuracy there that he has, and he's just young. Like you talked about, he is a true freshman. And, He's gotten to play a little bit for this team, and they've tried to mix him in a little bit more as the season has went along, and you can kind of see why. Washington in a tailback. Chris will get it into Cougar territory at the 48. All right, Green on the tackle. Let's go down to Harry. Yeah, guys, Chandler Fields is down here with a noticeable limp. He was trying to test it out. He's not doing that anymore, so it looks like this is not his show for the time being. I will keep you updated. Thanks, Harry. I mean, Fields is having a pretty nice game today. Hard to argue with his stats. 18 to 26, throwing the football. Boy, big collision as Chris picks up a yard, maybe two. So it'll be third down coming up. Rodgers hit on the tackle with Boot. Well, Dave, you remember just following up with Harry talked about, remember, that was a play or two where he got rolled up yeah. on one. Yeah. The, the, his ankle got fell on, and there was a, a, a flag on it, and you know he stayed in the game. But that, with the cold weather, that definitely doesn't help. He'll run it on third down, and maybe the extra effort. Now they're going to spot him back at the 43. They need to get to the 42. Chris Smith brought down by Caesar. One yard shy of the first down, fourth and one. Even the offense out there right now with the freshman quarterback. Put it over in midfield. Showing a lot of confidence in he and that offensive line. 
fourth and a yard. Louisiana two at two on fourth downs today. He'll line up in the pistol behind the true freshman, Zeon Chris. He'll keep it, then throw it. They go to the tight end. Johnson has the first down. That'll move the chains down to the 34-yard line, a pickup of nine. Just a really nice job. This is a play that they ran earlier this half. It was one where they were backed up, uh, and they were able to get it to the other tight end, McGill, and this time they just are able to flip it out to Johnson out in the flat. So you're faking inside zone, but it's you're throwing it to the flat all the way. Boy, Chris doing a nice job managing this drive for Louisiana. He'll keep it himself, has a bunch of room to run to the 10 and spun down around the eight yard line. It'll be first and goal, Louisiana, a 26 yard pickup. You see the explosion and you see right there that defensive end crash. And Chris, he pulls it and he's got them right back to the line of scrimmage. Low snap. This time they'll hand it off to Chris Smith and he fumbled the football and Houston has it. Maybe the best drive of the game since their opening possession for Louisiana, and it ends on a fumble in the red zone inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, just looking at it, he's got to squeeze that football, and nice job. Muton comes up with the recovery, but it popped out by Jamal Morse. Don't forget, coming up next, this one could come down to which quarterback plays better. Sam Hartman and Wake Forest square off against Brady Cook and the Missouri Tigers in the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Coverage begins after this one around 6.30 Eastern time, 3.30 Pacific. You know, you and I, we, we had Wake Forest early in the year, and Sam Hartman missed some time. They had a, he had a health scare. First game back looked like he didn't miss a beat when they were on the road at Vanderbilt. Definitely had the timing down, and you can just see how hard that offense is to try to contain. Tune out of the end zone, comes near side with it. Pass caught there by Dell, one of the best statistical receivers in the country. As he wraps up another one on the sidelines, he came into this game with 103 catches. That one picks up 12. And Dell today now with four catches. Make it, make it five catches. Well, hand it off, coming near side for Campbell, and he'll be dropped around the 20-yard line. But back to Dell, I mean, this guy's just, you start looking at his numbers and what he's meant to this offense. I mean, few publications had him as an All-American at the end of the year, but over the final six games, he's been averaging eight and a half catches, 112 yards receiving, 13 yards a catch. You know, as Coach talks about him, it's just an inside receiver that just runs elite routes. And I think that's what makes him so special as far as he may not be the biggest guy, but his ability to be able to just find space and be able to create enough of a lane for his quarterback to be able to get him the football. And, you know, he competes. He competes and he, he goes after football. Dana Holgerson told us, you know, as far as his draft status goes, it's going to be have to be one of those teams that, that – loves him and what he does. Some teams it may not fit what they're trying to do, but there are some teams out there where he fits the game plan. And we'll see, you know, if one of those teams that really loves him, he could be a second, third round pick, but if not, could slip down maybe sixth or seventh round. Yeah, and, and, and the one thing I can tell you, all it takes is one. Yep. All, all 32, they do not have to like your game. All it takes is one to fall in love with you. On third down and short, they're not gonna make it. They go with Henry off the left side, and that play is blown up in a hurry. Let's take another look at it. Hill just takes an inside oh, move. Yeah, yeah, Zion Hill Green. It's just an inside move, and there is no way that your offensive lineman can cut him off right there. I think that was Tank Jenkins that was trying to block him. And with that inside move, there was no way that he could cut him off, and just too much penetration and forces Houston to try to have to punt here. 
Zion Hill Green, you see why he was a first team all Sun Belt Conference performer this year. It's a short kick that will sail into the Louisiana bench area, and they're going to spot that around the 40. Where are they moving the football? Are they going to spot it? Right at the 45. Took a, a while, some confusion over there. But not the best effort for Wilkins. Time out on the field. Back to Shreveport and the Red River right after this. The Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl is brought to you by Radiance Technologies, 100% employee owned since 1999. I'm telling you, man, I, Hawk, you can play for me anytime, man. I love the energy, the enthusiasm. It is definitely the best play I have seen all year. The story is Hawk's a student assistant manager, uh, equipment manager, and uh, he, he does this every game. Second year he's been doing this, and kind of as a takeoff of something that happened. The Houston Oilers used to have a guy back in the day that did something very similar to that. But you know, bring some energy, some passion to the game, and let's. And we can't overlook the fact that he has got a, I mean, a almost flawless mullet working. Well, he's got the mullet working. The mullet is definitely going, and Hawk Hawk brings that energy to that sideline. Louisiana though, bringing some energy. They get the stop, force the punt, and. LeJean now comes around the edge, the former quarterback who moved to wide receiver the second game of the season this year and has worked more into the rotation as the season has unfolded. Well, they were talking about him being just a really good athlete, but the bottom line is, you know, we always say, hey, take the quarterback who, who's the backup, or it's a good athlete, put him at wide receiver, but the coaches were telling us there's a lot more to this than just saying go play wide receiver. Yeah, the nuances of the position, you know, just understanding from a footwork, from a release standpoint, some of those things has probably slowed down his development, but he's played well outside of the, the penalty there. He's done a really nice job for this team. Inside handoff, that goes to Terrence Williams. He'll have the first down around the 33-yard line. That's a gain of nine. Terrence Williams on the carry for the first down. Nice block there by A.J. Gilly up front, and Terrence Williams probably will see the bulk of this work after the second fumble this half there by Chris Smith. Louisiana led this one at the break. 16 to 6. Pass. They'll drop it off underneath to Williams, and he is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Brought down by Mutant again. Let's go down to Harry. I had the opportunity to speak with Donovan earlier this week, and he told me that he is doing jujitsu. He's been doing it for the past three years, and today is actually his 308th day taking time to learn Portuguese. He says he wants to be able to go to Brazil, take lessons, and be able to speak the language as well. It's easy to say that's a pretty impressive young man. Yeah, who loves the weight room, obviously. He's, he's got the guns out today. Yeah, he's thinking cold weather. Yeah, right. This isn't cold. He's made some plays today for sure on that Cougar defense trying to make another one here. Bell chasing down Williams. And it'll be third down and 11. It'll be interesting to see how they try to attack this third down. We've seen him a couple times try to run a quarterback as far as a design quarterback draw. That last play, you see the quarterback reverse out and just try to hit the running back in the flat. Uh, Houston has done a nice job of just being able to get pressure off of the edge, but as this game gets closer to zero with it tied up, you have a freshman quarterback. You don't want to give him too much, but you want him to be able to make a play for you. I got to think you're almost in two-down territory here to get this first down. Kind of a no-man's land. They'll throw it, and it's incomplete. Knocked away at the last moment. They were going for Johnson to tie end. And now let's see what the Raging Cajuns want to do here on fourth down. Rodgers knocks that one down. And it's fourth and 11. And here comes the kicking unit. And it's going to be the punting unit as well. And wow. Like you talked about, kind of a no man's land. Even if they're, they don't catch that, that pass, that is still a long, long field goal. But 
They've elected to punt this one away. They're kicking into the wind, by the way, yeah, so it'll be a 50-yarder into the wind. So Burns will punt it away. Nice little pooch kick. Fair catch called for around the seven-yard line by Sawyer. 2.59 to go, tied at 16. Stars in our stocking, MVPs fill the tree. St. Nick's and Kings, reindeer in flight. The NBA on Christmas Day. <laughs> Some good games on Christmas Day in the NBA. We're having a good one here at the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl. Tied at 16. You see the numbers for this Houston offense today. It has been a struggle, but yet this has been their story all year, these one possession games. Three of their games have gone to overtime this year. A long way to go. Clayton Toon keeps it, has a lot of room off the left side. Toon to the 30. And run out of bounds near the 40-yard line. What a play on first down to get this drive going with 2.50 to play. That'll be a gain of 34 yards. Well, nice job of the counter, the QB counter play. And you have your tailback that's leading up, and Henry does a nice job of just finishing it at the end. But we talked about coming into how uh, Clayton Toon could hurt you with his arms, but leading the team in rushing, and he does so as that offense was backed up, puts him out almost at midfield. First down and 10 from the 41-yard line. Tune, the veteran quarterback, record-setting quarterback, going up top. And incomplete, diving around the 10-yard line goes Joseph Manjack. Boy, that was close to hitting. Yeah, very close to hitting. I mean, you only rushed three guys by Louisiana and still had an opportunity for a one-on-one. You talked about Clayton Toon being a veteran, able to find that mismatch. And almost hit that post route. Clayton Toon has thrown for 38 touchdowns this year. Is that a penalty? He moved the ball back. Okay. Had to be a holding, holding penalty. Yeah, they, there was a holding penalty, no announcement on there, and they moved the ball back to the 32-yard line. Toon, he'll tuck it and run. Another flag comes out. And the Houston offensive linemen look around like, who was that on? We'll find out in a second who it was on. And that one is for sure holding, and it was right there in front of the official as your quarterback, Clayton Toon, tries to step up into the pocket. Holding, number 73, offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Boy, Cameron Johnson has played 830 snaps during the regular season, been one of their better performers, a first-team all-conference left guard. And that'll push it back to the 21-yard line. Boy, they've got to go forever now. First down and 30. They've got to get the ball all the way to the Louisiana 49-yard line. Tune lofts it up, has a man's caught! Caught by Carter. First down inside Houston territory. They're going to spot the ball at the 30-yard line. Just taking another look at it, you know, you're rushing four, but right away, that was the number three guy in Carter. He's just able to beat, get over the top and Dave, you talked about it, having to get to the 49 just for the first down. But they not only pick up the first down, but they pick up probably an additional 20 yards after the catch. Yeah. 40, it was a 49-yard pickup on first and 30. Whistles will stop play. I don't know. Yeah, it was timeout. Timeout, Louisiana. Well, we haven't seen the official 
call from our referee just yet. The previous play is under review. I wonder what we're reviewing. Maybe he stepped out before as far as where where the spot the, was. Yeah, the yeah. spot. I mean, because <laughs> that's the only thing I can kind of question. Well, Coach Dez over there obviously saw something to want to use one of those timeouts right now to maybe. Well, you look at Clayton Toon, his final game, the senior. Has had a heck of a career, and this would be a way to cap it off for sure. So he's at the, there you go. He, yeah, he's out of bounds. What is that, the 39-yard line, 38-yard line? 38, so yeah. probably going to push it back about eight yards. Yeah, the 38 and a half. But regardless, it's still a first down yeah, on first, a first and 30. Fir first and 30. Two holding penalties, and then you just catch them right as far as the matchup. And Toon and Carter able just to connect. And then I know a lot of the attention goes to Nathaniel Tank Bell. But, man, that's that's back-to-back -back plays almost where. After reviewing the play, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 38-yard line. It'll be first down at that spot. Well, fans, be sure to check out the ESPN app for the Capital One post game immediately following the conclusion of this one. Yeah, I mean, outside of those two holding, you just had some one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and Clayton Toon was able to hit it, and I guess he just said that Louisiana would not be charged that timeout just because of the review. Clayton Toon came in, ranked third in the country in passing yards. Finished the regular season, tied for first in passing touchdowns, but he's been held to just one touchdown pass today. But his numbers are creeping up as this one's gone along. He's now 18 of 27 for 204. Actually, a couple of touchdown passes. I think the officials are probably trying to get the clock correct. I know. They should realize how cold it is, though. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, for a clock operator, don't he's, make me he's send, inside. Hey, don't make me send Hawk out there. Well, Hawk will, Hawk will get, it, get it right. <laughs> don't make, Hawk will get definitely it get it right. <laughs> See some of the guys around just trying to bounce around him because the worst part is just stand, standing around. There's 139 on the clock, and he steps out of bounds at 143. Yeah, there's Hawk. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 43 seconds. One, four, three. That's when the runner stepped out of bounds. See, that's what Hawk said. He said, I knew it was when at 43. If they just asked me, I'd tell them. <laughs> All right, so we got the clock set. Everybody's frostbitten, but we're going to play some ball. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line. Houston with three timeouts. Louisiana with their three timeouts. Off the left side goes Henry. He'll be inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line, a gain of 13. They've had a lot of success with this counter play. They run it with the quarterback, and now you run it with Henry again and just being able to seal off that edge. A lot of those defenders where the DN you know, losing containment, the linebacker, he can't get around to the, to the edge, and both teams kind of just run it, letting, allowing his clock to run down a little bit. And you know, if you're Houston, you feel like 
you're in pretty good position to be able to kick a field goal in, in Louisiana. They got to they got to come up with the ball. Fifth play of this drive. It's already covered 65 yards. The pressure comes. They'll run it right side. Loose football. It's on the deck. Henry coughed it up, but I think Houston fell on it. Henry fumbles. Take another look at it as he tries to get up the field. It's actually one of his offensive linemen. Covered by the offense. It's all one of his offensive Second linemen down. that recovers the fumble, but also knocks it out. It's one of the offensive linemen as he was trying to get north up the field. It was Tyler Johnson that kind of he hit, and then Patrick Paul, the left tackle, is who recovered the fumble. Louisiana will take their timeout. Please reset the game clock to one minute forty seconds. One four zero. Let's take a look at today's unbeatable performance brought to you by Xfinity and Clayton Toon. We've talked about his career, 112 career touchdown passes now. Today, 18 of 27, 204, couple of TDs. Responsible for 118 total touchdowns. That's an American Conference record. As his career comes to a close tonight, he and his favorite target, Tank Dell. Glad these two guys decided to play. So many, so many bowl games, you don't get to see the superstars anymore. Yeah, you don't get to see the superstars. And what was interesting is, you know, uh, talking to Coach, you know, Coach Dana, and he was just talking about, hey, look, you're, you're all in. You know, I don't want to hear about the opting yeah. out and stuff. I know that you have other aspirations, and I'm fine with that, but we're going to finish this deal off right. And, you know, he, he had his guys, and I don't think it was a question, you know, what they were going to do as far as being able to come out here and compete. Second down. And 10. 40 seconds to play. Toon has some blockers out in front to the 15, down to the 11-yard line. Amos brings him down, but a 16-yard run by Clayton Toon, the team's leading rusher. And now Houston is going to call a timeout, and a lot of credit goes to that offensive line. I mean, it was counter, and it was quarterback keep on that counter. Cameron Johnson, that left guard, he cleaned it out, and he had he had some more help as well. And they they, they just crushed that defensive line and that second level for Louisiana. Well, this drive started after a fumble gave Houston the opportunity. Louisiana with their Maybe second best drive of the game. They had a first and 30. And that one struck for 40 yards. And then a moment ago, Clayton Toon takes it down to the 11-yard line. Toon averaging over four yards a carry this year. Boy, a game against SMU, he was just lights out in every aspect. Threw for 527 and seven touchdowns. Also rushed for 111 yards in that game. And there's not much. Now tell me the bad part of that SMU game. They lost 77-63. <laughs> That's the bad part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gave up 77. They've only given up 16 here. They've only scored 16, but they are knocking on this door with just 27 seconds to play. Pass is caught. Touchdown, Houston, and who else? But Nathaniel Tank Dell. Why not connect one more time before you guys ride off into the sunset? He's got off coverage, and he's just running a quick out and able to make a guy miss, and he's able to score. But the official 
on the edge. He didn't call a touchdown immediately, so Louisiana picks up the ball, and they take off running, and then the official finally comes in and said, yes, he broke the plane and scored, but there was no stoppage, no whistle or anything, but I don't, I don't mind the throw. I don't mind, you know, hey, look, we're not trying to kick a field goal. I'm getting the football to my playmaker. I'm, uh, he's gotten us here. Nathaniel Dell, and I'm going to keep it in Toon's hand, and, of course, they come through for him. Ramsey with the point after. It's up and good. Nathaniel Tank Dell has now produced a couple of touchdowns on his six catches, and this one a potential game winner. He now has 17 touchdown catches on the season. And for his efforts, he is our Capital One player of the game. You look at that, and you know that they had safety coverage on him being able to keep two two defenders on him, whether you know, a lot of the work he was going to do was out of the slot. And so you don't have the explosive yardage like he normally has, but he was able to produce of those six catches, you know, two of them being touchdowns. Boy, that's another tough one for Louisiana. This is a team that's blown three leads, which is tied for the second most in the FBS. Arkansas State has four. They blew a lead against Rice, ULM, and Troy this year, and led this one 16-6 to at halftime. So 17 seconds to go. Louisiana will have it at the 41-yard line. So maybe, you know, throw something over the middle. Try to pick up some yards and get it to a manageable throw to the end zone. See, Dave, Dave, you missed it. We missed our guy Hawk. We missed our guy Hawk. We we had to watch watch the action, but we missed our guy Hawk. That's what happens after your team scores a go-ahead touchdown late in the game. Yeah. I love it. But no, I agree with you. You know, you can work the middle of the field here. Clock stops after a first down. You, you you have to take care of the football, though, but a lot, that's asking a lot on a freshman. Loose football knocked out of the hands of Chris, and he falls on it. Ten seconds on the clock. Timeout, Louisiana. The Anthony Jones knocking the football out of Chris's hand there. That's what I was about to say. We'll take another look at it here. And just coming off of the edge, and he, he's able to just to beat your right tackle, and he goes for the strip fumble, and he comes up with the strip fumble, and Chris is able to recover it. But that's exactly what it was. That's, that, that's a tall task, a tall ask for any freshman coming into the game. Well, what did... Uh Coach Holgerson say to Harry at halftime, we got to get better in every aspect of the game. And well, I thought that they really, you know, I mean, there's some aspects, certainly they didn't perform well, but for the most part, this team is completely different than the one we saw in the first half. Well, created, what, you, you create two turnovers, a potential or three yeah. turnovers, really, you, you just didn't recover that one, but just this half alone, you've created three turnovers. Second down. Chris lofts it up, and that one is going to be picked off, and the Cougars are going to win this one. They rally back. Rodgers with the interception. Just taking another look at it here, and you know, right away you have pressure. And this is just a young quarterback just trying to make a play and force this football to his receiver and not able to come up with it and talked about it. Just Rodgers makes the interception, but you know, that was going to be a tall ask for any freshman stepping into that position against this defense, de defensive line that had played really, really well the second half and really, I guess, overall this game. You know, that, uh, Louisiana had its moments offensively, but when you came away with field goals instead of touchdowns, that gave Houston enough 
juice to kind of hang around and come out victorious in this game. Turnovers have been an issue for Houston this year. They're a minus eight in turnover margin. That was 118th in the country, but they are plus three today. And maybe Coach Holgerson will smile before this one's over. He's got a few seconds left. 23-16, Houston rallies. Trailed by 10 at halftime. And they win it by seven. They finish the year eight and five. Meanwhile, Louisiana will drop to six and seven. And the Cougars are your Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl champions for 2022. Well, that'll do it from Shreveport in the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl. So for Deuce McAllister, Harry Lyles, I'm Dave Neal saying so long. Time to get you the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl. Chris Cotter, Mark Herslick, and Larissa Harris have the call.